You're still on to Plus TV, and the program is The Breakfast. And we're glad that, to know that you're still there. Um, right now, we want to look at what is happening in River State and how it affects uh, the entire democracy, so to speak. Uh, Fubara, that is the governor of River State, promises implementation of Presidential Peace Pact. On the one hand, he's saying that it is not at his own detriment if he implements this. On the other hand, his party, where he was voted, on the platform of which he was voted into power, and some elders in his state are against it, and some of them have even gone to court. So we're going to be looking at this with Dr. Ibrahim Oshinowo, member APC Presidential Campaign Council 2014, 2019, and 2023. Good morning and welcome to the program, Dr. Oshinowo. Good morning, my program. Good morning, uh, our lady there. Good morning, Nigeria. In some way, I, I still feel like we are doing the same thing that River State did, uh, inviting um, the president, who is APC, to t talk about the matter which is happening in a state that is PDP. I don't know. But let us have your perspective of what is really going on in River State, first of all. Um, Good morning once again. Um, there's nothing new going on. It's just that the president, you know, as the father of the nation, uh, is taking, you know, out of his busy schedule, taking time to meddling or settle, you know, feel it between a, a godfather and a godson, a little godson. Uh, however, uh, both of them are not members of APC. Uh, they did nothing special during the presidential campaign. They are not members of our party. Uh, and we believe that um, APC has um, a lot in our team, on our table to solve economic wise, education, health. We made a lot of promises to Nigerians. So, uh, most of us uh, in the inner campus of the party has confirmed the president to, you know, uh, uh, and that is the president to focus more on our own problems by, you know, providing for Nigerians, you know, better schools, better primary care system, um, solving the issue around, you know, oil and gas sector. Economy is a shambles, you know, uh, most of our revenue and resources are stolen. So a lot on our table, you know, that him creating half of his business schedule looking at um, what is going on in the river state or not going on, whether it's constitutional or not constitutional, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. The year is only, we are going into 2024 a couple of days, and Nigerians are expectant, they are looking, you know, uh, uh, to see a better change, you know. How, how, do you, how do you so yes how do you think i don't really want to give more credit to them i don't really want to give more credit to what both of them are doing yes and the uh, and his excellence you're talking about um change coming uh, nigeria working nigeria becoming better than it was how will nigeria get to that point you're talking if, like you said, we should not uh, even consider whether something is constitutional or unconstitutional, how do you make a country work when you begin to do things that are unconstitutional? Is that not anarchy? The question is who is doing what is unconstitutional? Is it the godfather or the godson? Is it Wiki or, or His Excellency Governor Fubara? Who is doing what is unconstitutional? Because I'm living, I'm listening to so many shades of chains of opinion. And sometimes I just laugh and, you know, walk away. Who is doing what is not constitutional? We have to highlight that and, you know, make it, you know, meaningful. Who is doing what is unconstitutional? Then we can start from there. Okay, so... There you go. You, you, I just took you by your words because you said uh, what we should concern ourselves with is not whether the thing is constitutional or unconstitutional. That, that gave an idea that possibly uh, you are sanctioning uh, things that are unconstitutional, so long as it works for whoever is uh, involved, it's it's okay. 
That's why I wanted to clear the air because uh, if you say that generally, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just speaking from the ways I'm not, from other opinions that you guys, you press as you know, have been carrying for a while. I'm just speaking that somebody you know, constitutional, somebody not constitutional, somebody is a is called like a snail. Somebody, I'm just speaking from your whole. I don't have any opinion except if you uh, ask of my opinion, and it has to be direct. To, you know, uh, yes, there has to be a direction on who you want me to discuss. You know, I'm not speaking from the whole world. You know, I don't really, I really have any, you know. Okay, um, so what is uh, your opinion um, of this? Still thinking about what's happening. Okay, so what is your opinion of this peace pact? I'm sure you've read everything. Um, it's like an eight point agenda, basically, naming everything that should be done, starting with all matters instituted in the courts by the governor of River State, Sir Fubara, and his team in respect of the political crisis in River State shall be immediately withdrawn. All impeachment proceedings initiated, initiated against the governor of River State by the River State House of Assembly should be dropped immediately. The, river, the leadership of the River State House of Assembly as led by um, Honorable Martin Amai Willis should be recognized alongside the 27 members who resigned from PDP. So they have moved out of PDP as of, you know, when this was, was being made. But then they're saying they should still, um, they're the ones that would still be recognized. So what is your take? What is your own opinion? I'm, ask, I'm asking you directly now. What is your own opinion about this whole peace pact that was drafted for Safubara to sign? Unfortunately, the so-called uh, peace um, um, agreement with them have not, you know, taken time to go through. Except if you can show them. Uh, okay, one of them, one of them that you just read now is is tied to like what you said about a constitution or no constitution. Yes. They said uh, the leadership of the River State House of Assembly. That's the third point. Uh, as led by Right Honorable Martin Amawule, shall be recognized alongside the 27 members who resigned from the PDP. First of all, the constitutional things inside there is that you've resigned from one party to the other. Uh, the constitution recognized that you should leave your position, which means that they shouldn't even be members of the yes, State House of Assembly. Yes, it should be vacant. Uh -huh. Secondly, uh, it was said that the Amawule-led faction should be recognized, and then he will be recognized as the speaker of the house when already the courts which are constitutional have pronounced somebody somebody else a here martin's a here or a here or so edison the edison a here yes to be the rightfully recognized by law to be the uh, leader of the house of assembly or the speaker of the house of assembly so if these things are implemented it will mean that what the court has pronounced will be jettisoned and something else will be done so that's, those are some of the And then that even seen. affects the credibility of the courts as well. Yeah. So with what we've said, what is your own opinion on that? Um, quickly, let me take you down. I don't want us to waste much, much time. Right. Um, on this, what I would describe as bear pile of fights between the bear seller and the bear drinker. Mm. That's what I've been on time for talking about. They are both of serious elements. Both the minister who has a humongous function as the FCT minister to solve issues, transport, road, land issue, power, water. Rather, is focusing on his boy, yeah. the beer drinker. Who doesn't know the function? Who has not taken Taking time, I mean the Excellency Governor for a while, to study the functions of the Office of Governor, the functions donated to him by the Constitution, 1999 Constitution, as amended. Mm. He refused to realize that it is the Governor, there is a unlimited power of the Governor, and there is, unlimited, there is a limited power of the Governor at the doorstep of the presidential power. I assure you that I will not impose everything on um, God of Fubara. However, it must is a strategic area that requires any right thinking president who is trying to battle you know, the economic you know, impact of this country 
who allow issues to escalate in the lower state, especially in Niger Delta State. Now, what you've read, a layman, even a first year or second year law student in the university, knows that the president cannot change, single-handedly change anything in the constitution. If the uh, um, Amaye or the Eastern uh, faction believes that the court has recognized either one of them as a legitimate speaker, and Section 109 has there is no issue, there is no presidential intervention that can solve that because, however, I'm not sure that one of the speakers is part of the agreement. I'm not sure PDP at national level is part of their so called, that's what I'm describing as their yeah. fellow mm -hmm. You're right. So, both of them, BBP have the right to challenge the speaker who you said has been recognized by a court, who has ignited the section 109, declaring the, 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 the um, unserious, let me use that, unserious, jobless, elected as an assembly member into office. If they declare their seat vacant, they cannot. The speaker who is recognized can go on with his suit irrespective of the agreement with Fubara, Mr. Governor Fubara, and Mr. President. So, this is a central constitutional issue. The lay down, the guidelines to change the constitution is very clear. The schedule, I couldn't remember, I can't remember now, but it's clear. The National Assembly will take either executive or inner bill. Once it's approved by the choice of both national assembly, it will be sent down to the state houses, houses of assembly, the 23 out of them must consent a change. As of now, the president cannot overrule the court. Mm. So why are we disturbing ourselves? The president cannot. Once the suit has been ignited, Fuba cannot withdraw it because the PDP will initiate his own suit. Mm. And however, we cannot force those guys to come back to PDP. If they come back to APC, that is fine for us. But we will not allow their boss, Wicked Syndrome, to bring their lawlessness from PDP to APC. <laughs> that will not happen. I see that. All those the, the Wicked the jumping up and down in Abuja as if he's a foundation member of PDP, he's just wasting his time. I know Ashwaji is just tolerating him for some time. So we will not allow it for him to just come from nowhere. And uh, shouting on your mandate, and your mandate we shall stand. We don't take that here. We only have one boss in APC. This is a push, it's a Shwaju, We don't have two boss. We don't, don't challenge our boss. That you all this nonsense is doing in PDP, challenging, uh, creeping all this party. We don't take that. That's why I don't want to give so much. Credit. We don't take all those nonsense we can't do it. It should take it back to PDP, Article and the rest of them fighting themselves, making bottles, and you know, doing all sort of you know, disrespectful things to their elder, we will not accept it in Naples. If we get the worship, let him know that. We will not accept it here. Okay. We will not accept all those nonsense. All those things he's doing, is still there, is still a pattern of PDP, where they can slap their boss, they can be arrogant to their <laughs> boss, and because they stole, you know, they you know, on lawfully has, you know, numbers phones stuck somewhere. Mm. We will not accept that. Okay. So, I will not advise either one of them to stop fighting. If the governor, who has refused to stop his function, know his function as a governor, the guy is 1975. The Ayabelo is 1975. Their age rate, you should see Ayabelo, how Ayabelo is operating. And besides, let's go to even discuss few parts of their shady transaction between Buku and Governor Fubara. If you recall during the, during the uh, general election, Fubara was about to be tamed by the ESCC because he served as the governmental director of finance because he's a good and lawyer boy. He was he was he was promoted to uh, um um accountant general of the state. Mm. And he had there is no body. I'm saying it. You can you can, can challenge it. I'm saying it. the most crucial personality in the government. Or in government house, it's a direct DFA, director of finance, government house, and the accountant general. Any common living river state cover is within Kubara Wiki. So, a lot of transactions between them, I'm challenging both of them. A lot of, lot of transactions between both of them. 
To go down because the book that was compensated was imposed on rivers people. So why are we disturbing ourselves with both of them? Okay. When Buke is killing his elders, taking River State funds, channeling it to where he thinks is the best, Obama must sign, investigate all the DFAs and the government house. It has been happening like that and continues to happen. So most of, most of them has, you know, a fleeting relationship from funding, from project allocation. Both of them are like, you know, um, corporate and mongoose, mongoose. <laughs> like myself, the mongoose. One has a very bad venom. One would like to eat his favorite food is cobra. So if you I would, you would take time to read the history of mongoose, mongoose and cobra, snake cobra. So that's both of them. So we don't want to waste time. All these rivers people wasting their money going to court to challenge us. Don't challenge us. You challenge week. Hey, take week to court. Take Fubara. Who is your governor? Who does not know what to do? Take him to court. Yes, because I was about to ask. The legitimate speaker allows his governor of Fubara throw him under the bus. Mm. That's his own cup of tea. If PPP, their party, allow Fubara to throw them on that trailer, that is a cup of tea. What we are focusing in our party is to perform and deliver. We have two years out of this administration to deliver the goods for the people of Nigeria. Okay. That is our own headache. Yes, I, I and know, not I know the one vote of them. Especially the case, it should not bring all those PDP arrogance to APC. We okay. don't do that here. Okay. Do that here. I will okay. not allow it. I'm All sure. this is uh, jumping around with uh, the like, it's, sure, it's just I'm for sure some time. We will not take it. I'm sure he will get your message. Um, but my, my Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so I was going to ask, what is the impact of all of this on the people of River State, especially with you know their current governor and their former governor having this little rancor, I would put it that like that. And then obviously we're seeing this peace pact that some would say um, it's not working, and others, well, for someone like Governor Fubara, he's saying it's not a death sentence in his words. It's like it's not a death sentence. It's not as bad as you know people make it out to be. So, what do you think is going to be the impact on the people of River State, and does this even trickle down to Nigeria as a whole? Yeah. Can we now start to see this even in other in other states? Because it feels like Godfatherism all over again, and, and someone who is a principal is saying, "Oh, I am the principal, and so therefore you are my boy. You have to stay as my boy." Could there, could there be an uprising in other states in Nigeria? Because what we're talking about is the effect of all of this. Look, the receiving points are the people of River State. Mm. Who, either they like it or not, why is that going for the next four years? Yes. Any decisions he makes on the table becomes the law. The government has so much power. Once you become a government in this country, first day, second day, after your swearing day, first day, second day, they will bring what they call chat fact templates to you. And you see that you alone with your two hands, you have the right to sign unlimited, unlimited resources of the state to use it with your brain. You have the power of prosecution, you have the power of hire and fire, you have the power to give you borrow if you don't have on behalf of the state. Unlimited, unlimited, anywhere, both local and foreign markets. Mm. We've advised these governors on project implementation of what we call risk analysis measure to see if some contractors are worthy or not. Most of them just said, I'm very few of them who are. You know, I work for, and um, some of us consult a performing. There's a report of River State that most of the so called televised projects are codified. So called report. So the people of 
of different states, so far in the most. They will lack of government presence, their money will be channeled through top party, somebody will sit down in Abuja and tell them what to do. Mm. If they have 100 billion, they will tell you, okay, pay this one, 15 billion, pay this one. So it's what they have that they will use. So they are the ones that will suffer it most. Can you imagine with the humongous resources accruing to River State, they are still suffering? They have one of the largest oil wells in this country. Part of their oil wells are the ones shared to Bayesa, some of them links to Edo, some of them links to Kostuba. They have still they have the largest world levels. Mm. What about the tax and reality? Billions of dollars, Shell, Chevron, Ajin. Well, we're just worried. We are just worried that if he implements all this, it's going to rub off on some other yes. states. That's why we we're asking. Because, for instance, one of the provisions of that agreement was that the budget that has been passed already by the mm -hmm. recognized uh, lawmakers should be represented to the people who uh, decamped, who, who decamped, and all that. So, which means he will present the budget twice if he follows through. Because he, he cannot said, do that. He knows he cannot do that. Look, His Excellency, Governor Fuba, is a smart guy. Who taught him to demolish the house, House of Assembly? Who taught him to how to approach the court and get an injunction for him to present the, 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 the first budget? And, 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 and those 27 into a cage and allowing the speaker to be recognized. It's a smart data. Anybody that thinks that the buyer is a fool is fooling himself. He knows what he's doing. Mm. Okay. All right. That's well, where we I leave think it. We'll have to drop it at that point. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to thank you so much, uh, Dr. But this guy, you are not. <laughs> I've told you about the story of mongoose and, and, and when, when you finish, look at the story of mongoose and, and uh, 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 cobra, king cobra. Mm -hmm. Well, the best male for mongoose is king cobra, and you know the venom, how the how the richness of the venom of the king cobra. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Our message is for making the job we are giving you, the temporary job we are giving you, do it well. Temporary. And allow the people of River State to beat <laughs> and allow the gentleman to go. Okay. And the gentleman to go and wake up. Mm. No, you're right. Man, don't wake up. Man. And protest. <laughs> Be a man. Yeah. And stop. I, I know you know what you are doing. Thank you. Thank you know you. what you are doing. But you, going back to this drawing board, agreement is this 20. If you implement 60%, that's a part. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Ibrahim Oshinowo. Thank you. Uh, we know you're a member of the APC Presidential Campaign Council. You've been a member since 2014 to 2023, uh, but uh, we, like the way we like the way you presented your case uh, mm -hmm. uh, this morning. We hope that people like you and others will fight for our democracy and let people know their place and uh, what their duties are. Thank you so yes. much for being a part of our program this morning. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you for having me once again. Yeah. We've been talking to Dr. Ibrahim Oshinowo, member APC presidential campaign, uh, right from 2014 to 2023. And we've been talking about what is happening in uh, River State, State. Whether, it's, whether or not it's going to be a threat to democracy mm. in uh, this place. But today is Boxing Day. Go box your packages. Uh, unbox <laughs> Go unbox your, your uh, packages. Your packages and see what, uh, what was given you. But if you don't have, like we said at the beginning, unbox your plans. For, for 2024. 2024. That's right. So let's meet again tomorrow. My name is Nyamadu. My name is Rume Paulson. Have a wonderful day.